What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Leo coming to you guys with yet another video. Coming to you guys today with five things Dana Brooke can do in NXT. Last week on the last week's edition of NXT, we got to see the return of Dana Brooke on NXT for the first time in a, in a long time. I think the last time we got to see her on NXT was probably like early 2016, something around around that timeline. So it was it was very cool to see that she was able to make a return. I think this is something a lot of fans kind of wanted to see her go back to her roots a little bit, go back to where it all started. And I was finally, and we finally was able to get just that. And so I want, this kind of just had me thinking, it's like, even though she entered the battle royal, but unfortunately didn't, you know, um, win the match, but she did make it down to the final three. So that, that, that leads me to believe that they have some type of plans for her if she was to stay in NXT. Because I don't think if you, you have plans for somebody if you they made it to the final three. Usually if you are in the final three, they usually have big plans for you. That's usually the case what they do in these battle royals where rumbles or whatever you want to call it. That's typically how they like to set things up. So I want to do five things that she could indeed do if she does indeed return to NXT. So number five, we have to go with a tag team with Nikita Lyons. I think these two can actually work because Dana Brooks, I feel like she, if she's in a tag team, she has great chemistry with whoever she's paired up with. We've seen it with Mandy Rose. We've seen it with Carmella. We've seen it, you know, with the, the, the different tag teams that she's been able to be a part of in her time and being a WWE superstar. And I feel like her and Nikita could work because I feel like they could be like that powerhouse to the tag team division because I don't think they really had that true powerhouse tag team in the tag team division because most of them are pretty much like they have different backgrounds, whether if it's high flying, striker, submission specialist. So it's pretty much those archetypes. But me personally, I don't feel like they have like a true powerhouse. And I feel like they could work as a powerhouse tag team if they were booked correctly. And then when you think of it in the long run, it could lead to like both of them getting more over. And you could even do a feud out of it if you want to, if you want to be honest about it. Maybe Dana turns on her and then they have a feud and then Dana goes up from there. And then, you know, just keep building up from there. Those are different. That's one of the scenarios that I feel like could work if you want to get not just one person over, but both people over in the long haul of things. So number five, I have a tag team with Makita Lyons. Number four, this one seems like it, it might seem more likely. She just there for temporary purposes to probably boost ratings. So that's why I have to add the list because that usually is the case with some of these people that do go down to NXT. They're not there for really the long haul. They're pretty much there for just a little bit and they go back up to the main roster. Um, so I just feel like she was just there for that that one night. Maybe it was just a one night thing or something just to boost ratings. Or maybe she could be down there for the long haul. We will see. But that's why I have to add that on the list because that's usually just what happens with some of these people that come down. But I have to put that on there. Number three, she starts a partnership. Starts a partnership with none other than the NXT Women's Champion, Tiffany Stratton. I feel like both of these, both this scenario could actually happen because I think when you look at both of them, you kind of see some type of parallels between the two. As far as character-wise, character-wise, you can see some parallels between the two. But I feel like you have Dana probably be like her enforcer almost to kind of help her protect her, kind of protect Tiffany from everybody else and, you know, protect her championship and all of that. And I feel like those storylines typically could be great storytelling if booked correctly. And I feel like this could be a situation where maybe in a couple months time we could see maybe Dana Brooke turn and if she's more over the face and then we have a feud between the two or something like that. Maybe. We, we'll see. But I think a partnership could definitely work between the two. Um, I think it could do wonders for Tiffany. It could also do wonders for Dana. And who knows? Maybe they could even win the WWE Tag Team titles in the process. I don't think people will, would be too mad at that if that was to happen. But I have to add that number three. Number two she starts or rekindles toxic attraction. Now we all know Mandy Rose isn't in WWE right now, so we don't know what the whole situation is on that. 
But if they wanted to do that, I think the closest one to Mandy is Dana because I think Dana could follow in the same footsteps as Amanda Rose did when she did go back down to NXT. So imagine you putting, you have her be like the voice of reason for Gigi Dolan and Jason Jane. You get them back together and you have Dana Brooke be the new leader of Toxic Attraction and you, they become tag team champions and Dana probably becomes NXT champion somewhere, some point down the line. But here's the thing: the only reason, the only thing with that is if you, if they're a heel, they're gonna still have to go. What happens if you go up against Tiffany Stratton? Well, maybe they do a triple threat, and then maybe Dana pins one of the faces in the match, keeping having her win the championship, but not necessarily pinning Tiffany Stratton to win it. And then at, and at that point, maybe you can turn a Tiffany Stratton be a face because I think the fans do love her. So I think that could be a possible scenario that could work if. Being honest, and also oh, if, while we're on the talk of the track and stuff topic, what if Mandy Rose comes back to NXT and she recruits Dana and that become a four woman faction? I think that's gonna work too because I think they they kind of solidify like beauty but also power and aggression. So I think that when you look at it from that standpoint, it can work too. And number one, she starts a feud with none other than Tiffany Stratton. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit, but I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. She could be, like we said earlier, she could be, you know, like the enforcer, and that kind of plays into this as well, but this is kind of a little bit different. You know, she wants to go on her own and do her own thing and want to build herself back up, similar to Mandy Rose did, but not in, not the same. But, but the thing with Mandy, she was a heel, but Dana wants to do it as a face and, you know, wants to, take the Daniel Bryan type of route to get to the championship and she just goes through all these obstacles beating different opponents from different backgrounds going through like Zagria and you know different opponents that they have in NXT right now going through Last Legend going through uh, Roxanne Perez going through Gigi Dolan going through Jason Jane you know going through these different um, competitors to finally get to, to where she wants to be and that's being a challenger and potentially NXT Women's Champion, and maybe by the this time, maybe I don't know. The best time I think would be the, maybe like close to the end of your next year or like New Year's Evil or Halloween Havoc or even maybe Stand Deliver. I think one of those pay per views could actually work for pulling a big moment like this where Dana Brooke becomes NXT Women's Champion, and I think people wouldn't be mad at it. And a banger match between Tiffany Strand and Dana Brooke. I don't think people would be mad at or boo because if they put up a great match, I think it can work and you can put Dana Brooke over and also put, you know, um, Tiffany Stratton over and maybe by that time next year, Tiffany Stratton will kind of be ready to go up to the main roster and, and go from there. But that is the end of the video. You guys like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Hit that post notification bell to turn every time I post a new video. We're on the road to 1K. We're at 510 subscribers right now. So if you are new, love wrestling, you love where you love gaming, please, please, please go subscribe to my channel because you do not want to miss the, the uh, content that I am driving for you guys. Also hit that post notification bell because you, you never know when I'll post a live, live stream or videos like this or a gaming video, rent video, any type of video. You guys do not want to miss it. Also, comment down below. Let me know um, if Dana Brooke does go back down to NXT. What are some scenarios that you would love to see play out? What do you think are some storylines that she could sink her teeth into? What are some storylines that you would love to see Dana Brooke be part of? What if it's the main title picture, mid card title, form a tag team? Maybe even a, who if you if she goes back to NXT, who is somebody that you would love to her be in a tag team with? Leave that all down in the comment section down below. I love doing these dialogues with you guys. I appreciate you guys. Take one of me, and I'll see you guys in the next video.